Well, back I be. Welcome, but what took so long? I had hoped to have gotten into some lively conversations by now. Well, let us fall hard to it now, if you will. But of course, put to me a question. My question be this. How may a man know when the saving grace of God be in his heart? Well, a very good question to be sure, and I answer you thus. First, when the grace of God is in the heart, it causeth a great outcry against sin. Secondly... Uh, hold a moment. Hmm? Should you not rather say, it shows itself by causing the soul to hate its sin? And what difference between crying out against and hating? Oh, a great deal. I have heard many cry out against the evils of drink, whilst on their way to the alehouse. Mm -hmm. And Potiphar's wife could cry out against Joseph with a loud voice as if very chaste. But just the same, she was quite willing to have had him to her chamber. Ah, but you're catching at details. Nay, just setting things right. Go on. Thank you. The second evidence of grace in the heart is great knowledge of gospel mysteries. Do hold once uh. again, for this is not needfully so. A man may possess all knowledge and yet be as nothing if he hath not charity. You'll be catching in details again. I think not so. For although knowledge be needful, it is our acting upon our knowledge that showeth the true Christian. A man may know like an angel and behave like a demon. Therefore your sign is not true. As King David saith, Give me understanding, and I shall keep thy law. Yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart. I can see that I value knowledge much more highly than thou. Not so. I value it as greatly as thou, if it be accompanied by action. But do go on. Show another sign to show that the work of grace is in the heart. Not I, thank you. For no matter what I say, thou dost catch at straws. And then may I? I cannot. The work of grace showeth itself to a man thusly. There cometh upon him great conviction of sin, and the certainty of damnation if he find not mercy by faith in Jesus Christ. Then there cometh a hungering and thirsting for righteousness, which appetites are fulfilled by Christ. Mm. <laughs> and according to the strength or weakness of his faith in his Savior, so are his joy and peace, so is his love for holiness, so are his desires to know him more and also to serve him in this world. And how doth grace in the heart show itself to others? By confession of faith in Christ. Oh, talking, you mean? Aye, and more. More? What more? Much more. Such as by a life that agreeeth with the talk, to wit, a life of holiness. Not by talk only, as a hypocrite or talkative person may do, but by practical subjection of the life to the word of God. Hmm. Hast thou any objections to what I have said? Nay, say on. Then, by your permission, I have a second question to pose to thee. Ah, very good. I love to answer questions. Say on. Hast thou experienced the work of grace in thy heart? What? Why? And doth your life and conversation testify thereto? Uh, well... Or um... doth your religion stand more in your word and tongue than in your life? Answer me an honest answer, I pray. For to call oneself righteous when life and neighbors testify otherwise is great wickedness. Thou dost begin to meddle in things of private experience and conscience, which things I did not anticipate to talk upon. And I do not feel bound to answer thee in these matters of the heart, and so shall not. As you choose. But tell me, why dost thou ask such questions? You seemed so eager to talk upon religion that I thought I might learn for myself if it be mere talk or true experience. And have you any conclusion? Not yet. But I have heard nothing to belie the things I have heard of thee. What things? That thou art a man whose religion lieth chiefly in talk, while your life showeth the opposite. What? They say you are a dark stain upon the Christian name, and that some have already stumbled at your wicked ways, and that more are in the same danger. Why the nerve? They say, moreover, that you regard your religion with no more affection than the alehouse. That your religion is on an equal footing with covetousness, uncleanness, swearing, lying, and vain company keeping. Well, this is an insult, grave insult. Moreover, there is a proverb gone abroad about thee. What? What proverb? Tis the proverb spoken of the whore, which saith, She is ashamed to all women. 
So is talkative a shame to all Christians. Well, since you are so ready to believe any lie that floats into your ears, and so quick to make rash judgments, I cannot but conclude that thou be some beavish or melancholy man not fit to be discoursed with by a gentleman. And so, I must bid thee adieu. Uh, but there is much profitable conversation to be had. Not with the likes of you. Adieu. You see, it is as I said. Your words in his lust could not find agreement, and so he had rather part with your company than with his sins. Indeed. But shall we call after him again? Nay, but let him go. His is the only loss, and he has saved us the trouble of parting from him. For the apostle hath said, From such withdraw thyself. Yes, but I am glad to have had this opportunity to witness to him, for it may come to his mind again some day, and at least I have dealt truly with him, and so am free of his blood. Thou did indeed speak straight on with him, which thing is seldom done in this age. Aye, and for this reason doth sin so greatly abound in the church, and makes religion to stink in the nostrils of all who pass by. Aye, too many debauched and wicked talkers are admitted into the fellowship of the godly, and these hypocrites do puzzle the watching world, put a stain upon Christianity, and grieve the sincere. Oh, that ministers were as true to deal with sinners as thou hast been! Then would they either conform their lives, or find that the company of saints be too hot for them. Methinks me self of a verse. Oh, really? Say on. It may be we can put it to song some day. How talkative it first lifts up his plumes! How bravely doth he speak, how he presumes, to drive down all before him. But so soon as faithful talks of heart work, like the moon that's past the full, into the wane he goes. And so will all but he who heart work knows. A pretty verse indeed. Someday we should try to put that to song.